The Wither. It's a name that strikes fear in the heart of every Minecraft player. A scary, three-headed, undead floating monster that rises from its grave to attack players. But this boss mob doesn't randomly spawn or wait for a player to accidentally journey into a realm. No, it only comes to those who purposely summon it, crafting its body on the ground in front of them. But where did the Wither come from? What dark secrets are in its past? And what do they mean for the future of Minecraft? Stay with us as we uncover the secrets of the Wither. To understand the Wither, we have to go back. Back before players had ever heard the name, the Wither. Long have the residents of the Minecraft world had to battle against the undead. The skeletons of ancient warriors would appear during thunderstorms, charging after the living on their dead steeds. The cold, dead hands of those who had drowned reach out from rivers and lakes, trying to pull their victims down to suffer the same fate they did. It was a battle that never seemed to end. No matter how many undead were killed, they simply kept coming back, over and over and over, night after night, forever. Villages that were once full of happy people were now abandoned, or worse, had become home to nothing but shambling zombies, all of the residents having been turned into the same undead they fought against. We can't keep living like this, one angry villager cried at a town meeting. My child was taken by a phantom, another shouted. My wife was turned into a zombie, said another. The mayor of the town tried to calm them, but it was no use. The town had been under attack from the undead for some time, and the assault showed no sign of letting up. It seemed that this would soon turn into yet another abandoned village, home only to more undead. But then, a lone voice broke through the shouting, Perhaps I can help. Everyone present turned to see the hooded figure, and no one had ever seen this person before at all. But they were here, and they were offering help. What did the villagers have to lose in letting them try? The hooded figure explained that the only way to fight fire was with fire. In order to defeat something as powerful as the undead, they would need something just as powerful. But this weapon to battle back against the dark forces didn't exist. It would have to be created. The villagers asked what price the hooded figure wanted for his help. They were told that there wouldn't be any charge right now, but once the task was finished, the villagers should offer whatever they thought was fair as payment. A disagreement broke out amongst the villagers. Some of them didn't trust the stranger. Others pointed out that they didn't have any other options at this moment, and if they didn't accept his deal, then they would surely be overrun by the undead soon. What choice did they have? After arguing a while, they finally all agreed. They would accept the hooded stranger's help. The deal was made. The hooded figure then produced something from his bag. It was a painting that he hung on the wall of the meeting hall. The villagers approached the painting and saw that it was some kind of diagram. Four blocks in a T-shape with three different types of blocks sitting on top. The villagers asked what it was and the hooded figure told them, it is a recipe. But these weren't just any blocks. To get them, the villagers would need some brave adventurer to journey into one of the most dangerous areas in the world and retrieve them. The villagers put out a call for adventurers who would be willing to risk their life and journey deep into the nether. They promised great rewards for anyone who could gather the necessary materials and bring them back. Word spread and many players came to the village to offer their services. The villagers would gather to send them off through another portal, but sadly, none of them were ever seen again. But then one day, a player appeared who was different from the rest. He was an experienced player, equipped with the best armor and weapons the villagers had ever seen. He had journeyed into the nether before and knew what challenges would face him there. He told the villagers that he would be the one to finally get them what they needed. As they had done so often before, the villagers watched as he entered into the nether portal, but they were doubtful that their brave hero would return. While the villagers waited, the player fought through many dangers in the nether. Eventually, he came to a valley where he collected soul sand. It was a strange block that made him feel uncomfortable, and while holding it, he thought he could sometimes hear something that sounded like the cry of many distant voices, moaning in pain. His task in the nether was far from over though, so he pressed on until he reached a nether fortress. The player battled through the fort, killing mobs, until he finally finally found what he was looking for, a group of wither skeletons. The villagers were surprised when one day, the player emerged from the nether portal. He had both the soul sand they required, but three wither skeleton skulls as well. Everything they needed to recreate the blocks, shown in the painting, is now there. And not a moment too soon, either, since the village was once again under attack by undead forces. The player placed the blocks in the pattern that the painting depicted. First, the four soul sand blocks in the tea. Then, he began placing the wither skulls on top. Just as he placed the last skull, the sky suddenly went dark. The player, frightened by what was happening, started started to back away from the blocks, but then was pushed back by an explosion of energy. The blocks were gone, and in its place was a terrifying creature unlike anything anyone had ever seen before. This was the Wither, and it had finally been unleashed upon the world of Minecraft. Some of the villagers panicked and ran at the sight of it. The player who had just summoned it prepared to fight, but to his and much of the village's surprise, the newly summoned creature didn't attack them. It flew up into the air and in an amazing display of power, started raining down wither skulls on the attacking undead. The skulls exploded as they struck the ground like bombs. Soon, all of the undead were destroyed, but so was much of the village. As the villagers surveyed the damage done to their village, the darkness that had engulfed the town when the wither was summoned went away. The hooded figure appeared once again. He asked that the villagers now hold up their 
their part of the bargain and pay him for what they thought was fair. You just destroyed our homes, one shouted. We're not gonna pay you anything, called another. A fight broke out amongst the villagers. Some thought that they should give the hooded figure something since, after all, he had done what he promised and killed the undead. But others said that they had been tricked and that he had done more harm than good with his monster. Eventually, the ones who wanted to pay the hooded figure were overruled. They would pay nothing. They told the mysterious stranger to take his creature and leave. The hooded figure didn't seem upset by this. He told the villagers he would do as they requested and leave. However, the wither had been summoned by them, and so now it belonged to them. The wither would stay. With that, the hooded figure left, leaving behind the wither, silently floating above the village. The villagers began to rebuild their homes, while the wither continued to float above the town as if it was watching them at all times. When undead would attack the village, the wither would once again protect them, throwing its exploding skulls to kill the mobs. And just like before, this would often lead to parts of the village being destroyed. Many villagers decided to leave, especially the ones who had wanted to pay the mysterious hooded figure. They no longer felt welcome in the village. And what was the point in having your village protected by something that just kept destroying it? Those who remained in the village were mostly the ones who had insisted that they not pay the stranger, and soon they noticed something happening. First, their crops began to wither and then completely die off. Animals became sick, and soon they too would die. It got to the point where nothing at all would grow in the village. Many of the villagers noticed that the areas that were sickest were those directly beneath the floating wither, which still refused to move or go anywhere else except when fighting against attacking undead. Soon it wasn't just the plants and animals that were becoming sick though. A villager ran out of their house crying that something was wrong with her husband. When a group entered the house, they saw something terrible. The villager had become a zombie. Many of the villagers began to flee the village, deciding that they'd be better off taking their chances in the wilderness than stay in a village where more and more of them were turning into zombies. A sickness was spreading through the village and everyone knew the source, the monster floating above their village. The population of the village grew smaller and smaller and smaller until just like had happened to so many other settlements, it was completely abandoned. The only ones left were the undead villagers who continued to roam the village. Once the final living villager was gone, the wither, who had seemed to be watching the whole time, suddenly disappeared as if now its task was complete. Those that left the village traveled far and wide. Some went as far as the frozen regions, hoping the cold would prevent the sickness from reaching them. Others journeyed deep into the desert. It was there, after many years had passed, that one of the few villagers still living who remembered what happened in that faraway village decided to leave a warning. The villager carved a single block with the image of the three-headed creature that had destroyed their village. They created a message in the blocks to stay away from the village, warning that only death would find them there. But as time goes on, messages decay, and what was once a warning seems to become an invitation. It was this invitation that far in the future was found by a player. They stumbled across the ruins of the desert settlement and discovered the strange block with the carving on it. Huh? The player didn't know what it meant, but like all Minecraft players, they couldn't help but feel the pull to investigate the mystery. The player followed the direction the ruined monument pointed in, not realizing that it was meant to tell them not to go in that direction. The player traveled to the village where the undead villagers continued to wander. The zombies attacked the player as soon as they entered the town. It had been so long since they were alive, they no longer knew what they were doing. The player had no choice and killed all of the zombies. They explored the village. It wasn't much different than any of the other zombified villages they had explored in their adventures, though they thought it was strange that this one had another portal built nearby. Then they came to a large building in the middle of the village, the meeting hall where the hooded figure had appeared so long ago. The player searched the building. In one chest they found a block of strange sand. In another was a strange dark skull, a wither skull. And then they found it. The same painting the hooded figure had revealed to the villagers, the one depicting a cross of soul sand with three wither skulls placed on top. The player looked at the painting, looked at the strange items they had just picked up, and knew what they had to do. The player traveled to the nether to collect the rest of the items they needed, journeying to the same locations that the adventure had been to in the past. They collected enough soul sand for the base, then found the outpost full of wither skeletons where they were able to complete their collection of three skulls. The player returned to the village that was now free of undead and checked the painting once again. They went to the center of the village and recreated what they had seen. If the block in the desert depicted the image and there is a painting in the village, then surely this is what the player was meant to do. They placed down the soul sand, stacking it in a T-shape. They then placed two of the wither skulls on top. Before they placed the third, they had a feeling that someone was watching them. But when they turned to look, no one was there. The player placed the final skull and just like had happened before, the village was engulfed in darkness. The stack of blocks the player had placed exploded and in their place was the wither. The explosion knocked the player back as the wither floated into the air and began growing in size. It saw that there were no undead attacking, but neither were there any residents of the village. The only enemy that the wither saw in front of it was the player. The wither attacked the player, throwing its exploding skulls down, and the player jumped and ran, trying to avoid them. The player was able to rush in and land a few hits of their sword, and to their shock, they barely saw the wither's health bar move at all. This would be a much tougher battle than they thought. The player used every skill he had, every item, and special ability. They tried range attacks so they wouldn't have to get in too close, and found that they could slowly wear down the wither's health. But when it hit 50% of its health, the wither suddenly changed once again. A blue shield formed over the wither, and the player found that their projectile attacks would no longer 
work. The player had no choice but to get close and attack with their sword once again. But then they weren't alone any longer. Wither skeletons suddenly started appearing and attacking the player. The player ran all over the darkened area, taking out the wither skeletons as they would appear, and trying to land hits on the wither in between, all while avoiding the exploding skulls raining down on them. Eventually, they had the wither down to the bottom of its health bar. Just one more hit should have been enough to finally kill it once and for all. The player rushed in and swung their sword. The wither's health bar was depleted, but it didn't die. The player watched as it seemed to charge up, but then they saw something else. A hooded figure standing in the doorway of the village meeting. The distraction was just enough time for the wither to finish charging, and with a great flash, it exploded. The player was dead, the wither was gone, and whoever that hooded figure was also vanished. All that remained where the wither once stood was a crater with a single nether star inside. A nether star that future players would find and use to craft one of the most powerful and helpful items in Minecraft, the beacon. The wither wasn't dead though. It would continue to exist as a sign of the deal that had been struck so long ago, and of the betrayal that had followed. But for the players brave and strong enough to summon the ancient evil and then defeat it, they'd be rewarded with one of the most beneficial items in the world. And it was a cycle that would continue to be repeated by players in Minecraft over and over and over again, because this wasn't the end. Far from it. No, this was only the beginning.